Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever episode of the Riley Hall Show um, on Demographica. This is a very exciting time. I am your host Riley Hall, as you've probably guessed. Um, and this is the show where we, we talk about you know politics, current events, all the important stuff in the world today, but from a, a grassroots kind of ordinary sort of British perspective. So let's get straight into the first story that we're going to be covering. So some of you might have heard about the Biden administration um kind of s switching their their viewpoint on uh, the patents for coronavirus vaccines so what is this all about well basically um ambassador catherine tai i hope i'm pronouncing that correctly um recently said on twitter that um the biden administration will no longer be supporting uh patents uh for coronavirus vaccines so essentially intellectual property protections on those vaccines as if they were any kind of other product will be removed or at least that's what they're hoping to achieve they've said they're going to start working with the world trade organization and trying to uh, relieve those uh, those protections so what does this mean well basically as you're probably all aware intellectual property protections patents ensure that your specific product cannot be replicated anywhere else so when you think about the vast majority of the vaccines that are out there they were created at least in part privately and these and these vaccines could be produced by all kinds of different organizations all kinds of different corporations and um, publicly run institutions and all these things but because they have patents because they have intellectual property rights they can't they're, they're not letting anyone else do that essentially and what that means is there's a massive shortage of vaccines and when you see the vaccine distribution especially in developing countries i mean if you look at india the whole situation there is i mean it's it's horrific right so <clears throat> clearly we need more so we need to be getting the 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 re recipe, if you like, for all of the different COVID vaccines that have been created. We need to be sending them out to just about every country in the world and allowing anyone to produce them, right? If they work, if they are safe, if they are effective, then, you know, any any, any place should be able to to make them if, they, if they're capable. Um, so what the Biden administration is doing is actually... A very progressive thing you know this is this is very much putting people before profit and look i've criticized the biden administration many times before um and i you know i think joe biden has done a lot of terrible things in his career in politics but this is actually very impressive and i think it's something we should all be applauding it doesn't mean that we're going to lose out in the developed world right it actually means everyone wins essentially the only people who don't win is the immensely wealthy the ultra rich executives of these pharmaceutical pharmaceutical companies that are creating these vaccines that are benefiting um from having a patent on them <clears throat> essentially you know having an oligopoly on this uh, this specific uh vaccine um so the administration said well, Abbasta Catherine Tai said, the administration believes strongly in intellectual property protections, but in service of ending this pandemic, supports the waiver of those protections for COVID-19 vaccines, right? So you don't have, I mean, you don't have to, you know, believe that we shouldn't have intellectual property protections <laughs> to think that this is a good idea. And that's, just, that's what she's making clear there. Um, and it's a very, it's a very interesting thing because... This, I think, represents something bigger than what we what we might imagine it to be um, at first glance, because I think this is a paradigm shift, really. We're seeing the US acting in a way that is pretty damn selfless um, towards developing countries. Perhaps it is there is an ulterior motive. Perhaps, I mean, perhaps it's to do with the fact that a lot of developing countries are turning to China for aid they turn to china i mean the belt and road initiative things like that you know china has massive um infrastructural power in iran now and they are becoming closer to those countries you know there's all of these things happening so the u.s might want to kind of be like well you know we we seriously need to uh to improve the way this is going with our um 
developing countries and our relationship to our allies and things like that. Especially after Trump kind of ruined their image on the world stage. But it is obviously a good a good thing. Um, but the UK... Nothing. Nothing. We don't support this measure. Um, as I'm, as of recording this, the UK does not support the measure and we haven't really heard that much from the UK government about this in general. The EU has arguably been even worse with the vaccines. They've tried to recall vaccines to prevent them from being administered outside of the European Union. It certainly hasn't covered itself in glory throughout the pandemic. Um, and obviously the, the vaccine rollout in, in pretty much every EU country has been pretty abysmal. Um, so this is one of those stories where it's starting to become extremely, extremely obvious that something is changing. There's a wedge between um, different Western nations. Because you think about the way Europe is going, we're becoming more insular, we're becoming more nationalistic. I mean, vaccine nationalism, as it's being called, um, is very rife in all of the European countries, including Britain. But in the US, it seems like we're getting less of that now. I mean, at the beginning of the pandemic, and even quite recently, there was definitely an element of vaccine nationalism. But now, it seems like the US is taking a different approach. The US is also taking a different pro approach on a lot of other issues. I and mean, if you think about it, you know, the US is now talking about significantly the Biden administration is talking about significantly increasing corporation tax and income tax on the wealthiest. You know, the, uh, the Biden administration is making a lot of pretty bold moves, certainly bold in comparison to, you know, the, the Obama administration. Um, and obviously on a totally different spectrum to, every, to anything the Trump administration tried to do, because most of that was, uh, was, I mean, it was, in a totally different realm of reality, wasn't it, really? Um, so I think this is something that we have to realise. The US isn't just going to sit down and accept this kind of status quo, um, insular, nationalistic kind of uh, kind of situation. And this, this ideology and this, this way of doing things, this modus operandi that Europe is adopting more and more, you know. And by Europe, again, I want to make it clear, I include us, right, because we are a European country, even if we're not in the EU anymore. So we have to recognise that, and I think it's important for, for the UK to respond to this in a positive way, in a way that will engage more with the outside world and will start putting people over profit. Somehow, I don't have very much faith that that will actually happen. Um, you know, I mean, this is the Conservative Party in government after all, and of, and of course the Labour Party are in total disarray and don't seem like they'll win an election anytime soon. So it's all quite up in the air, but I think this is ultimately a very welcome move from the US. Um, it shouldn't have taken this long, let's be clear, it shouldn't have taken this long. Um, and it is primarily because of the pressure from activists and um, the more progressive representatives in the US that has enabled this to happen. What we need is a more effective version of that in Europe. Um, because right now our activists basically achieve very, very little. Um, and it certainly helps when you have a government in, in place that is at least marginally progressive to begin with. So lessons to be learned there from Europe, and I really hope the European countries um, follow suit, because they definitely should. It's the right thing to do, um, and we need to put people before profit in this in this pandemic and into the future thank you very much for watching everyone uh if you enjoyed the video if you liked it you know then why not translate that into a digital form and click the like button or you know even better if you're feeling extra wild subscribe and click the bell um we would really really appreciate it